Hey, uh, <laughs> okay. Ah! Okay, sorry. Relax. Good. I'm good. I'm calm. I'm focused. What's up, guys? How's it going? Uh, <laughs> sorry. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of losing my mind right now because Blizzard just put out a post literally, literally 21. I looked at my freaking wrist for a watch. I'm losing my mind. Blizzard put out an update 20 minutes ago saying that they have changed their classic content plan. I have been talking about this since the minute, since the, like, literally since right after the announcement of BlizzCon. Four phases of content release are not enough. You need to have at least six, maybe seven. Blizzard has put out an announcement saying that they have gone from four phases to six phases. You know what? Actually, let's get right into it. Let's, let's, let's get right into it. Okay. <clears throat> Let's read this. I haven't read through the whole thing. I skimmed through it. I lost my mind. My phone, my Discord, everybody is, is popping off. Okay. Every, dude, yes, six phases. Yes, yes, I know, I know. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Relax. Relax. Classic content plan by Kyvax. At BlizzCon 2018, I don't, dude, how do I mute my phone? I'm like a little schoolgirl who just won the student council president. What is going on with me? I'm losing my mind. Okay. At BlizzCon 2018, we pro proposed a plan to give Classic four content phases. These were planned to be centered primarily on a raid power progression. Currently, based on both your feedback and our own deliberations, we're now planning to increase it to six phases. Our focus is still primarily on player power progression, but we're also aiming to capture what it felt like to play in a realm community in original WoW. To do that, we're planning to mirror the approach taken by original WoW with patches paired together. We'll launch classic with content from original WoW patch through patch 1.2. This is what this is what private servers start on. Then the second update will include content that was in the original 1.3 and 1.4, and the third classic update will have 1.5 and 1.6, and so on. Our first phase primarily focuses on launching classic with Anixia and Molten Core, but we've decided to hold off on Dire Maul for a while. Marinon is still in the first phase because it was originally released on December 18th, 2004, just two weeks after the first player hit level 60. But we recognize that Dire Maul is in a different category. Some of the loot that's attainable in Dire Maul is so good that it would affect progression through those early raids. We're also planning to hold off on releasing Kazakh and Azergos at launch as well for the same reasons. I, 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 I said all this in a video after BlizzCon. Okay, the next change we're targeting addresses two concerns. First, Zolgarub and Blackwing Lair unlocking at the same time would differ from how they originally came out, and it makes sense to not have gear and enchants from Zolgarub available during early progress into Blackwing Lair. Secondly, the Emerald Dragons should be available earlier than the opening of Encourage as they give us a way to start preparing a nature of this gear for some of the encounters in AQ. Along the way, we've taken a look at the items that provide the biggest power gains, many of which were introduced in 1.10 as part of a sweeping dungeon itemization pass. The patch, that patch was when tier 0.5 gear was introduced and relics were added to the drop tables of many bosses. It also adjusted drop rates and drop locations of a lot of gear to make room for the relics. We've gone back and reconstructed many of the most heavily affected drop tables as they existed prior to the 1.10 patch and we're planning to update the drop tables alongside the Encourage war effort. So, the Nax Blues, the Nax Blues, that I was talking about. We've gone back and reconstructed many of the most heavily affected drop tables as they existed prior to the 1.10 patch. We're planning to update the drop tables alongside the AQ war effort. So progressive itemization in that regard. Yes, dude, this is, okay. I didn't even read that part. I just skimmed through this. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes, dude, okay, I'm losing my mind. Okay, uh, with exceptions, there are a lot of little changes that made in earlier patches that don't have a big effect on player power. And in those cases, we're planning to use the 1.12 drop rates and locations. Okay, we, we kind of thought that was gonna happen. That's reasonable. Okay, 
One example of the many items we're planning for is Titanic Leggings, which is a world drop that first appeared in 1.10. We can confirm that it will be controlled by the same content unlock that restricts the other 1.10 loot changes. Bravo, dude. Okay, here we go. Uh, here's what the release order of, uh, currently looks like. Molten Core and Ixia Maradon. Dire Maul, Azergos, Kha'Zix in Phase 2. Blackwing Lair and Darkmoon Fair together in Phase 3. Zolgarub and the Emerald Dragons in Phase 4. Phase 5, the AQ War effort begins. Uh, dungeon loot reconfiguration, tier 0 0.5 dungeon gear, relics, drop rates, and location changes. And Phase 6 is the next patch, basically. We haven't yet determined exactly when Phases 2, two through 6 will occur, and PvP content is notably missing from the list above. So, six phases, and they're not sure where PvP goes. Are they going to put it in its own phase, which would be exactly the seven phases? Or are they going to package it in with something else? Maybe here in phase two, I think phase three is too late. I think if they package it in with another phase, it needs to be done in phase two. Uh, other than that, it should be between phase two and three because I think Blackwing Lair is too late to put the PvP system in. Um, <laughs> that's because we're still evaluating our options regarding PvP rewards, and they also change over time, both in power and in terms of which PvP reward items were available. While we can't elaborate on every detail of every step we're going to take yet, we're here reading all of your questions and we're going to keep the answers coming. Dude, bravo, bravo, dude. I, dude, I'm actually losing my mind. I, I, I saw this and dude, I got in Discord. You can ask anybody in my Discord. Like, look, dude, look at everybody in my Discord right now. Look at this. Like I'm getting DM'd. There's Nano from NOS is messaging me. Dude, like th I, this is insane. Like, yeah, of course. Dude, I, dude, I, I can't believe it. Let me, dude, I, I, I taught, this is, I'm pretty sure this is exactly, I mean, I, look, you guys watch my videos. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't know. Maybe this is the first time you watched the video. Uh, I'm normally a little bit more sane than this. Uh, I'm a little, normally a little bit more sane. Uh, but also, I'm pretty sure this is exactly, let me load this up here. YouTube, SFAND, BlizzCon, <clears throat> BlizzCon thoughts. Hey, Jason here. This is almost exactly my proposed timeline. This is almost my exact proposal. Now, some of the months are off, and and this is this is. Uh, some of the months are off, right? And they, they're not sure on the months yet. I actually, I changed my mind on this. I think Dire Maul maybe should be even a little bit later than this uh, at this point. But uh, yeah, disregard this. MC, Anixia, Maradon. Dire Maul, Azergos, Kazik, Phase 3, which they don't have in. The PvP system, basically. BWL, Dark Boom Fair. ZG, Emerald Dragons. AQ, Tier 0 0.5, PvP gear update, Dungeon gear update. Phase seven, Nax, Scourge Invasion. This is outside of having a PvP system right here, which they're not sure on yet. And, I, and I've said before, you could actually package this in with Dire Maul. This is the exact same content release plan that I proposed. And your guys' feedback, our feedback as a community has made an impact. And I don't know about you guys, that is something I think myself and a whole lot of other people have not felt in years. And I, I didn't sleep last night. I drove back home from a wedding I, in Austin. I was driving all night. I was about to go to bed and I, and I get this message from Irish Boomy on Discord and, and a whole lot of other people. I first saw it from Irish Boomy, but I don't think I'm sleeping. I was literally about to go to bed. Wow. Okay, guys, I'm unbelievably excited about this. I am unbelievably proud of the community to, to, for people giving feedback and for people pressing the issues that are important, not having Dire Maul in on launch and, and really helping Blizzard understand uh, what we want, right? What the classic community wants. And I'm surprised <laughs> and thankful actually that that blizzard actually listened you know that's that's one thing that a lot of people haven't felt uh in a long time but guys thank you so much for watching 
Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for your guys' feedback, for you, for you guys, you know, making sure. I know some of you guys a little bit louder than others. <laughs> and I'm one of them, but this is unbelievable. Thank you guys for being here. Guys, if you like my channel, please sub, please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Hit the like button if you guys like this video. Follow me on Twitter. Come watch my streams on Twitch. On Twitch, we do a little bit of everything. It's the official WoW Classic waiting room, okay? We're we're patiently waiting. We're doing IRL. We're doing variety games. We have a great time. Uh, sometime, I mean, we're always open to talking about WoW, uh, even though that's not really... Uh, well, we're always open to talking about vanilla WoW, right? Even though retail WoW isn't really the focus of the channel at the time. Uh, so, guys, thank you so much for being here, and... Oh, join my Discord. Almost 7,000 people in the Discord. Discord.gg slash SFANTV. SFANTV on every platform. Instagram, Twitter, everything. All those links are in the description below. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you guys soon.